Hello lovely love beings, this is Lois from goldenactivations.com and uh, a friend of mine asked me to collect my thoughts and un understandings and feelings about the third dimension. So I began by writing a blog, uh, which you are more than welcome to read uh, on the website. Um, but there's so much, there's so much really, and there's even so much more that uh, won't be included in this video probably, but we'll see how much we can get through. Um, so that I can share my understandings um, and my experiences with you uh, from my third dimensional reality and how things have evolved and changed as I started working with my own frequencies, raising my vibrations um, and how it works really. So when we speak about the third dimension, uh, we might hold a bit of judgment, um, we might look at it as being something that's bad um, and we are playing with the idea of good and bad and so straight away we have duality um, but the third dimension is where we all land. This is our first base camp. I call it base camp, I think that's the perfect wording and description for it because it is base. Um, not only is it the base of where we land but it's base, everything about it is very base. Um, it is um, everything to do with distracting you from going within, from claiming your own power, from realizing that um, you are a sovereign being in your own right. Um, and it's also a place where as beings, we fear taking responsibility for ourselves. We are, uh, Although we may look like adults, we are actually adolescents uh, in vibrational and frequency terms um, who haven't yet learnt to live in full integrity um, and to take responsibility for the self in everything that we say and do and emit um, out into the world. Um, and uh, it is perfectly designed to be a place where we explore the density. We come into these spacesuits, these bodies. Um, these bodies are laden with our, our programs, our beliefs and um, our dense emotions, all the things that we pre-planned to come here to experience and play in um, and our body suits hold these programs, these beliefs and these dense emotions ready for the time when we are ready to activate, trigger uh, and feel and then release. So we are perfectly designed as human beings in these body suits to exist in the third dimension. The third dimension is perfectly and beautifully designed for that purpose, for us to land um, and to start exploring. And um, once you start to work with frequencies, raising your vibrations, not emitting these dense frequencies that we start off emitting in the third dimension um, uh, then you start to gain different perspectives because your energies are expanding um, and uh, vibrating for a height from a, f a higher frequency and because of that we start to get, get um, more inner standings, we understand a bit more, we begin to see a bit more now because we've expanded and we can sort of start to take our heads out of the third dimension and pop into the fourth dimension or pop in and out of different dimensions as we raise our frequencies. To understand more of where we are at at that moment. 
But the main thing really about the third dimension is that it is um, necessary. It's the base camp, the first port of call of our landing here um, to experience our Earth journeys. So we are built for it. Um, it is perfectly designed for us. And the most important thing is we chose it. We chose it. So um, we uh, love to play in the um, victim stories maybe we have victims, that things are happening to us that we have no control over um, and we love to play in these stories for a long time, create bonds with other people who feel the same uh, victim frequencies, who resonate at the same vibration and then we create groups uh, where we emanate uh, the same frequencies. Um, Yes, so basically the third dimension is all about distracting you, uh, allowing you to give your power away, um, distracting you from going within. It's a place where you are led by the ego and the mind and um, your heart is closed. You're not operating from a heart space here in the third dimension. You are learning to navigate these dense emotions that you hold within and you are being introduced hello to these heavy programs and beliefs that you carry within your body and then that's when the game starts here in the third dimension where you have um, beings that have already agreed to come into your experience to assist you with the programs and the beliefs and the emotions that you are unable to tap into by yourself. Um, some of these emotions and beliefs are so deeply um, held within that you uh, understood beforehand really that you needed somebody else to come in to assist you to um, burst those bubbles of emotions and uh, densities and programs etc just to help you now these people will be playing parts um, often in the third dimension will perce we'll perceive them to be bad people and that we are the, the good people we are the right ones because we, we the ego loves to be right um, and um, you know we, we are victims really and we like to share that story about our victimhood and the injustices that we've had um, um, by the hand of somebody else yet again giving our power away and believing that um, it was not all perfectly orchestrated by us in the first place so um, it's I find it now just incredibly magical but when you are in the third dimension um, you don't see it you don't see it you don't understand this because you are heavily heavily uh, invested in it um, and of course you don't see it because you're possibly not working with frequencies and energies you're not understanding yourself yet you yourself yourself you are a complete mystery to yourself so then then we start to discover that we are energetic beings maybe experiences happen to open our hearts we start to feel something different within us we start to awaken we start uh, on our spiritual journey maybe where we discover reiki um, or other spiritual practices or meditation and we have experiences uh, within within um, those moments of stillness that uh, make us question and expand our consciousness um, and then for me um, I was heavily invested in the third dimension, uh, quite happily sitting there in complete blindness. Or maybe not complete blindness, because I suppose I've always had um, a, a, this deep sense of knowing. But um, I didn't um, respect it enough to um, 
listen to it on a, on a continual basis maybe I would allow other people to tell me I would ask for second opinions third opinions um, because I wasn't completely um, secure in my own um, counsel and um, yeah so um, you know very materialistic um, and heavily in, invested in programs about how I should, how my body should look, what size it should be. It should be perfect and very thin. Um, and I would go to great stakes, um, painstaking, you know, obsessive um, behaviours around the food that I ate um, and self-loathing, um, being highly critical of myself really and uh, controlling and um, so those programmes took a long time to um, unravel and um, as, as we raise our frequencies and gain insights in higher vibrations and in the higher dimensions some of these programs or emotions that we held some of them completely go um gone because now when i'm thinking about certain things my god i used to spend so much time thinking about that or worrying about that gone nothing feel nothing um certain memories um certain thoughts and feelings that I had around people or experiences, gone, gone. Because it, you've cleared it out of the body. There's nothing wrong. It doesn't mean you have um, some memory loss problems or whatever. It's just gone. It's not relevant anymore. Um, so it's, you've cleared it out of the body. It's gone. Um, but with other things, with other heavy duty programs, uh, emotions, some of them there's residue some of them are still there i look at these things uh, from from a dis, uh, this perspective this is the way i i tell myself or this is an insight insight i had about it uh, quite recently um was looking at the emotions that we have in these programs and uh, beliefs and whatever as pools so we have pools of anger pools of resentment maybe, pools of self-loathing, um, pools of judgment within the body, held within the body and then situations come up in our realities, oh somebody said this, somebody did this, oh nasty person, bad person, um, blah 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 and then we allocate these little titles um, to that experience oh my boss was really horrible and did this and was like this and blah 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 my husband or my wife said this really cutting remark and um brought up anger or whatever emotion comes up in you at that specific moment and then another situation where something else comes up but the truth is it's never about the story uh, or the situation that's happened between you and that person, ever. Um, and that emotion that's triggered is meant to be triggered. They came in to do that for you, to assist you, because they are there in service to you, in service of love already predetermined that this was going to happen and they were going to come in and assist you because it was such a heavy duty emotion that you couldn't get to it by yourself so you asked for assistance they came they did the job um because we are all beings in divine service to each other um in the third dimension we would never even dream of believing that's possible but once we raise our consciousness and come from the heart and start to understand and work with frequencies then we see, oh my God, we are completely in divine service to each other. Um, we resonate at frequencies, we match up with people that resonate with us, um, and this is continually happening. As we raise our frequencies and we, we um, connect with people that, that we never connected with before, um, 
and it keeps happening these matches happen all along our journey as we as we raise our frequency and and ascend um but what i was trying to say about these pools of emotions was it's never about the story it's never about that person um it is also um no matter how many experiences of anger you have with different people it's taken all those people to trigger that anger pull within you, to stick a pin in, to start releasing all the emotion, all the anger out of that pull. Because there's only one huge pull of anger within you um, that needs to be released. So um, it's never about the story or the people. Uh, and it's about that one state of emotion that you have within you that needs to be released and if it takes one person or 500 different uh, situations and people to come in to help assist you to stick a pin into that uh, huge uh, deep anger bubble that you're carrying within you then then that's what's going to happen because that's what you predetermined beforehand and because you are so committed to your frequencies and raising your vibrations and so diligent um, and because we are all love beings in divine service to each other um, all these amazing beings are, are willing to come in and to assist you to, to reach that anger pull within you to be able to release it so um, I have uh, now great appreciation for the third dimension and for the purpose it holds for us as the training ground yes it's hard yes it's really unpleasant yes it brings up all the yucky stuff that we don't want to face about ourselves but all those yucky things that we don't want to face that's in all of us that's why we came we came in laden with this density um for the sole purpose of getting rid of it in this lifetime so that we could um, raise our frequencies and um, move forward um, into higher vibrations, new and more amazing timelines. So it holds a really important purpose. That's the base camp uh, of our experiences. Um, we have to honour it. We have to learn uh, to not judge it. Um, because it's absolutely perfect in its purpose. So I was dancing between uh, the third dimension and the fourth dimension for a really long time. Um, I had opened myself to experiences with energy and Reiki over, it doesn't matter, sort of in linear time, but 20 years ago, let's say. And it's taken a really long time to um, finally anchor myself in a new dimension, a new frequency. And it's only happened um, uh, around six months ago when I felt I was finally anchored in a new dimension, in the fourth dimension. And um, yet again, here it is a matrix. There is a grid work around it. There is a pattern. Um, and for me, what I see when I see the fourth dimension is the beautiful honeycomb pattern, the hexagon um, shape. Um, that's 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 what I see. That's what my higher self is showing me as the um, fourth dimensional um, matrix in my mind, in my reality. And I see it as you know when you um, go to the fair and you go on a bumper car, those cars that bump against each other, and then there's this metal pole behind you, and at the top of the metal pole, it is linked to the roof. So my understanding is that we are in these bumper cars with these metal rods behind us linked to the roof. So in the third dimension, we were linked to a, a certain matrix, a certain frequency there. Now again in the fourth dimension and in the fifth and as we go forward on our ascension journey, we'll always be linked to um, a new grid system, a new pattern. Um, and the sparks will be flying as we're connected to that on the roof. Uh, so it takes time. We have to be really patient with ourselves. And um, 
because we are bringing the body along with us, um, we have to be very, very patient because um, we could have uh, gotten huge understandings, uh, awakenings, expansion within our consciousness, um, but then the body has to catch up too and uh, be able to resonate at the frequencies that the consciousness is starting to, to resonate at. So that takes time. So that's why we have to listen to, to the body, listen to, to the soul speaking through the body to us, explaining to us what the body needs at that certain time. I was for many years really um, stuck in a pattern of eating the same sort of things and I'd be quite, um, you know, really strict about it and then I'd be very unkind with myself and quite ruthless about certain things, not eating certain things or whatever. Um, but now I'm much freer in in the fact that I will listen. Yes, I eat healthily as much as I can, but if the body's craving something different, then do it. You listen to it and give give what the, the body what it needs so that certain aspects of your of your bodies um, can activate and incorporate what it needs from those foods in able to assist in the body's ascension journey as well. So, um, yes, and as I finally moved from the third dimension into the fourth dimension, my universe told me, and it was quite, quite vivid, I was on a bus journey going towards the airport, flying out of um, one country and, and going into another one. And the bus driver on the bus actually said, um, the the matrix is closed. So I realised, yes, I, I understand that, I get it. I'd seen um, a portal opening that morning before I took the bus journey and it was a beautiful rainbow portal um, showing me that um, I was leaving one dimension and, and going to be entering another one. And from, from the aeroplane looking out, um, the huge portal was there around the sun, so I understood this is this is huge. When when we start on this uh, ascension journey, um, we all need to be so kind and patient and gentle with ourselves, and really commend ourselves because this isn't a journey everybody wants to take. It's not a simple journey. Um, there's a lot of introspection. Um, and work that needs to be done on a continual basis. It's not a one day on, one day off process. It's a continual um, mastery of the self where we become true disciples of the heart and um, commit every moment um, of our lives to it and so um, there is deep deep respect there for everybody everybody who who is here on the earth plane experiencing these um, emotions programs belief I respect everybody because it um, is a huge 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 thing that we are doing and for all those beings that have decided to move forward and um, embody more light and uh, become their true selves. Um, I send you deep, deep love, deep, deep respect um, for what you're doing because um, this this is huge and this is uh, amazing. Ooh, I'm starting to shake. Let's see if I can balance you there. Okay, and just one more thing that I wanted to say as well. So as I was um, starting on my journey, um, I fell in love with crystals. I would work with crystals and offer crystal, crystal healings and um, energy sessions and crystals. Crystals, huge obsession and love affair with crystals for over 25 years um, I had a huge garage full of crystals and then we started traveling as a family and then the crystals as um, held uh, in a garage back in Wales at the moment um, which gives me 
uh, great pangs of uh, guilt and anxiety actually because they should be handed out to people who who need them and want want to work with them now because um yes sorry i digress the point of what i was saying is i resonated with crystals for a really really long time because they were high frequency and because i was a dense frequency in the third dimension the crystals resonated at, at a higher frequency um which gave me energetically something to work on to uh, attain that my frequencies could become a match to these crystals, these wonderful beings that are here in assistance to us. So that's what I did. I worked with them, felt them, they would vibrate, they would speak to me. Wonderful, wonderful, absolute, important love affair. And then, uh, the Andaras come into your life then, because you've started to, to raise your frequencies, you're resonating at a different vibration, um, and these emit Christ consciousness uh, frequencies, so, so the crystals take a, a back, step, back step really then, uh, which sounds a, a bit sad, but it's all perfect. And then they go forward and work with those who are ready to um, rise up and raise their frequencies again. So for me now, it's Andara world. Yes, you can see them shining and um, emitting their frequencies out to you uh, and activating you, I hope. So, yeah. So this journey is never ending. It is a continual process of evolving, expanding, raising your frequencies, uh, holding more light and just keep going. And uh, it fills me with joy and excitement. Of course, there are days where it doesn't feel like joy and excitement when you are having cosmic flushes maybe. <laughs> Um, when you're purging um, and releasing programs uh, and beliefs, you know, this it is a roller coaster. Um, but the blessings of it and the heart expansions and the compassion and the love and the Christed consciousness that you feel when you start to do this work is just absolutely beyond, beyond compare. And now having been able to see and look back at the third dimension and, and um, appreciate it for what, for what it is and what it does um, and to be able to see how far we come and keep going um, and how we are changing. We're not the same people anymore, vibrationally, um, in any any way. Um, just really be very kind to yourself. Listen to your own counsel. Go within, feel what resonates with you. Listen to your body and um, start working with crystals or possibly if you are interested in Andaras, introduce yourself to the frequencies of, of Andaras, have a look at some of, um, images of Andaras, they'll activate you in the same way. Um, and just keep going and know on the days that you feel um, crappy that there will be greater expansions along the way and um, nothing is lost, um, everything is gained and uh, I applaud you, I love you, I respect you um, and I wish you um, so much love and blessings and all the wonderful things in life on your journey too.